arc length. So here we have a circle with angle theta and radius r. Let's say we're asked to solve for the length of this arc between these two points, this one right here. How do we do that? Arc length is usually notated as an s, so s is equal to arc length. So let's think about what our arc length would actually be. Well, an arc is part of the circumference, so it's a fraction of the circumference. So we obviously need to start with our circumference. So our circumference would be 2 pi r, but now we need a fraction. So let's first look at it in degrees. So let's imagine theta is in degrees. So what would a fraction be? Well, we know a fraction is part over a whole. So what would our whole be? Well, it would obviously be the angle around the entire circle. So the angle around the entire circle is going to be 360 degrees. So let's write that, 360. And what would our part be? Well. If, we're, if our whole is in degrees and it's an angle, then our part would be the angle theta. So to find our fraction, it would be theta over 360, and then we'd multiply that fraction by our circumference, and we would get a fraction of the circumference, which would be our arc length. But what if we have s in radians? Well, we would start the same way with the circumference, and then our fraction, well, we know 360 is equal to 2 pi, so we can just write 2 pi here. And if 2 pi is the total angle of the entire circle, then theta is going to be our fraction. But we can actually simplify this because we have a 2 pi in the numerator here and a 2 pi in the denominator, so we can actually cancel these out. And we will be left with r times theta. So if your angle is in radians, the arc length is just going to be r times theta. But if it's in degrees, it would be 2 pi r times theta over 360. So now that we know the formula for arc length, let's actually put it into use. Let's say that theta is 40 degrees. and our radius is 3. So we have our angle in degrees, so we need to use this first formula. And so s is going to be equal to 2 pi times 3 times 40 over 360. So 40 over 360, we can cancel the zeros. 4 over 36, we can divide both of those by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 36 divided by 4 is 1 ninth. So this is all going to be equal to 1 over 9. Let's rewrite this. We have 2 pi, and then 3 times 1 ninth is going to be 3 over 9 which is equal to 1 third, and then 2 pi times 1 third is going to be equal to 2 pi over 3. So this arc length is 2 pi over 3. So let's look at another example, this time in radians. If we have a radius of 2, and we are given the angle 3 pi over 4, and we are asked to solve for the arc length, the arc length around theta. So first we need to solve for theta, and then we can use this equation here. So let's do that. There are only two angles in the circle, 3 pi over 4 and theta, and we know a circle has a total of 2 pi radians, and so we can just subtract 3 pi over 4 from 2 pi to get theta. So let's do that. We have 2 pi minus 3 pi, let me write that in green, 3 pi over 4. 
So we need a common denominator here, so let's multiply this by 4 over 4, and we would get 8 pi over 4 minus 3 pi over 4. 8 pi minus 3 pi is equal to 5 pi over 4. So our angle theta is equal to 5 pi over 4 radians. So now we can solve for our arc length. So s is going to be equal to r times theta. We know our r is equal to 2, and then we multiply that by our theta, which we know to be 5 pi over 4. 2 times 5 pi is 10 pi, so we have 10 pi over 4. So we can actually simplify this. If we divide both of these by 2, we, we will get 5 pi over 2. So the length of this yellow arc here is 5 pi over 2. So now you know how to solve for the length of an arc given an angle. In our next video, we'll look at how to solve for an, the area under an arc. So that would be this area here.